Welcome to Books in the Freezer, a podcast dedicated to the deliciously disturbing world of horror fiction. I'm your host, Stephanie, and today I'm joined by author Max Booth III, and we're talking about being trapped with claustrophobic horror today. So Max, welcome to the show. Why, thank you. Thank you for having me. This is a fun podcast. I I enjoy the show. I enjoy your amazing TikTok uh, content. <laughs> I'm, look, I'm looking filled with this. Thank you. Oh my gosh, you make some funny TikToks too. Okay, the other day when you did your um, one where you said you had maggots in your fridge, I was like gagging. I'm like, no, no, this man does not have a refrigerator full of maggots right now. <laughs> Anytime I make a TikTok video, I feel deeply embarrassed, and I have to do it when no one else is in the house. And the house was empty, and we have a fridge that is broken at the moment, and I have a box of maggots screaming, and it just seemed like the logical thing to do. But I will never admit to anyone in my household that I have done this. <laughs> I don't know. It is, like, the most embarrassing thing. Like, I, I too, I'm like, you have to leave this room. Get out of the house. Go go to the store. No one can watch me yeah. do this. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain why it is, but it is. It's like it's like being caught like Googling yourself or something. It's like... <sighs> I am just amazed by people that do like TikTok dances in public places. I'm like, I would rather die than ever record myself in front of other people. <laughs> I also don't quite understand how to edit most of TikTok, so I see a lot of videos, like stuff that you make and other people, and I'm like, how the how the hell are they doing this? But then I think, I'm not going to Google this, because that would just make me feel <laughs> even more embarrassed. It's, I don't know, it's a weird and sometimes finicky, finicky thing. I, I think I get around it by, I keep calling anyone who watches my my videos uh tiktok tweens and that makes me laugh a lot for some reason so i kind of justify it by getting to say that i mean i think the audience tends to run younger so a few people have asked me to stop saying that but i I refused (laughs) you know what i i will proudly identify as a tiktok tween it's okay me too (laughs) well speaking of maggot screaming that's your new book that's coming out yeah Indeed it is. It's a book about a about a dad and a son finding some some dead folks in a backyard and those dead bodies for some reason look just like them and they uh just kind of experiment with these bodies and try to figure out what's going on and they do not succeed. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> I had so much fun with this and i don't know how you managed to make a book that was so gross and stomach churning at times also so heartwarming like i was like oh that is (laughs) (laughs) a cute (laughs) a cute little bow on that and also i think really captured the like essence of divorce children of divorce spending like weekends with the other parent i'm like yeah that is exactly what it feels like i so my parents are still together, although I think that was a mistake. I think they probably should have divorced a long time ago. But um, I live in a household where well, my wife is divorced from someone, and she has kids with them. So I think I've just kind of soaked up that type of experience with how mm-hmm. sometimes custody arguments happen. But also my brothers. None of them could stay with someone longer than a couple of years without things just going wrong. And they all have kids with different people as well. So just, and they all each like 10 and 11 years older than I am. So growing up, I've had a lot of like Phil Stan experience almost but from the sidelines of mm-hmm. just these types of disputes. So I guess I've just kind of soaked that up for this book. Well, it worked. Like, say, my first-hand experience, I was like, yeah, that is the, like, <laughs> awkward, like, I don't want to cause trouble, I guess. You know what? It's yeah. fine. I'm going. Don't worry about it. But yeah, I loved it. Also, if people like body horror, which I know a lot of people do, this is a great book for that. So much uh, corpses disintegrating, if you're into that. Who isn't? Who isn't? Like, I loved uh, Mary Roach's Stiff. Like, if you liked books like that, this is perfect like i said the characters just absolutely worked and also i usually have like one pet peeve in fiction and that is first person child narrators but this one was not annoying i really i really enjoyed it i have to admit something 
So I sometimes do obsessive like Goodreads, even though I hate it. And I saw you had finished reading it. I went, oh, all right, cool. But I went on TikTok. And you have posted a video where you talked about how you hate child new readables. And I thought, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that too. I'm like, oh, I hope he doesn't think this and like watch this and think like, this is why she hated it. This is why she didn't get a star rating. She hated I, it. I, la- I laughed. Like it was like, God damn it. <laughs> It's just a very specific thing. Like either they are, I feel like it's written by people who aren't around kids too much because either they're too smart and they just talk like adults, like they don't talk or think like children do, or they lean too much into like the cutesy, like naivete, like, I don't understand how the world works. Like, I don't know. I didn't feel like that was the case here. Like I, I, it worked in this one. So don't worry. I I enjoyed it. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) While writing it, I did kind of come to the conclusion halfway through this kid sounds pretty smelt sometimes and he is he's not really that age well he would be and then i kind of thought i don't kill and then i got some uh, beta readles who uh, kind of said the same thing and they suggested making him like 15 instead of uh 12 or 13 whatever he is in the book and i thought nah i'm not gonna do that so i just didn't listen to anybody i just continued as it was and i think i'm okay with it yeah i think it towed the line okay i mean i also think kids are smarter and have a better understanding of the world than people give them credit for and i think since we're dealing with a lot of his internal world and like you know he has a good understanding of what the dynamic is with his parents and he's like i'm gonna be the peacemaker here and make a decision and i don't know i thought it worked have you ever seen that movie i think Bill Paxton directed it, but he's also in it called Frailty. Ooh, no, but I was thinking about it. Like, it's on HBO right now. Oh, okay. I would highly recommend it. Okay. I took a big inspiration from that book, that movie, because it's also narrated by a kid around the same age who lives in Texas mm-hmm. while witnessing his dad just have a mental breakdown. So I think if you watch that movie after reading the book, you might be like, oh, I see what he was doing. <laughs> really good movie. This is a... It's good. I've heard that. Okay. I will have to give that a try. Yeah, so when doing this episode, we thought about doing something that would tie to Maggot Screaming, like we talked about doing like a science thing, but I think we ended up going with something that connects more to another book you've written. Yes. So we're doing Trapped Claustrophobic Horror. I'm still not sure where I'm going with the title. It'll be one of those. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, they yeah, I don't know which one is best. Both seem pretty appropriate. Like, it's a little way to, like, milge those together, like how, like, celebrity uh, couples, like, milge their names together. I don't know. Yeah. Clap? Yeah, we'll portmanteau it. Clap? No, that's <laughs> terrible. Horror that gives you the clap, yeah. I would do that topic. I don't think I'm a particularly... Okay. I'm going to say I don't think I'm particularly claustrophobic. But I think maybe I would be okay with, like, trapped in a house, trapped in a room. Not okay with, like, physically squeezing into a cave or, like, in a confined space where I can't move my arms. Have you been in the cave? No. Where do you live? Have you? Yeah. Pittsburgh. Okay. For some reason, I thought you lived in Texas, but I don't know why the fuck I thought that. Yeah, we have some caves out by us, and you have to, like, pay money, and you go down, and what's the real spelunk? Is that what you say? Yeah. It's it's a really gross-sounding world. I don't don't like it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to say that. (laughs) So, And um, I believe I've gone to some in St. Louis as well, and... um, there's one in Nevada or New Mexico. Anyway, I don't like it. I don't like them. <laughs> but for some reason, they like, you know, when I go on vacation with my, my family, they, they go, eh, it's, an, it's a national thing. Why don't we do that? And I'm like, okay. And as soon as I'm down at the bottom, I hate it. I don't like it at all. I also, I couldn't do it. Like, The Descent is one of my favorite movies of all time. The scene where she's like, stuck in the cave and the girl's helping her out Mm -hmm. it's like one of my favorite scenes but i'm just like i can't like she can't you're just stuck in that in that cave yeah that scene specifically is pretty uh anxiety inducing i rewatched that a couple weeks ago not because of the podcast just by chance 
I think it's on mm-hmm. I think it's on HBO Max or maybe it's on Peacock. I don't know. Anyway, pretty good movie. It's uh, one of the most one of the most stressful movies I've ever seen. I think I I believe it. Yes. Well, I rewatched it a few like last year or so with my sister, and she was watching it for the first time, and she's like, "Why do you enjoy this?" <laughs> But I was watching it again. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot how tense and stressful this movie is. Like, right from the beginning, like, we have very few moments of ease. I know there's a sequel, but I have not seen it. Have you? No, no. Do you know what the plot even is? Do they just go back to the cave? Well, I think I they make Sarah go back because they, like, hear about her escaping, depending on which ending. Yeah. Watch, but if you do the, the U.S. ending they know that she escaped and they need her to guide a crew back down. Do you think that's why they changed the ending so they would have a sequel potential? That's possible. I always thought it was just because Americans uh, can't deal with yeah. <laughs> dark endings as like a, they can't handle that level of bleakness. Yeah. That's what I assumed too until like right now. And now <laughs> I'm wondering if it's a mix of that and also, but what about the sequel? Because, like, even with my movie, which is fairly definite, no sequel, I had those questions from people. Well, how would we do a sequel? You would not. <laughs> it's not a franchise. How was it writing the screenplay for your own work? Pretty, uh, pretty cool and fun. And I never once thought it would actually get made. So I think that had a lot to do with it. If I had known that in a couple months after finishing it, I would be signing contracts and like dealing with casting and budgeting i would have probably stressed out about it way more but when i wrote the script it was just like a fun thing to do i had a manager who was like yeah i'll shop this around but i never actually thought it would happen so it was pretty uh easy going i think and yeah but like now that it's on my mind one of the things they wanted me to do so badly was change the title to something like like one world only one or two worlds so it could become a franchise because they were like well what would you call the sequel we need to do something too <laughs> it's like no i wouldn't call it anything there's no sequel but they were so focused on that like just like they couldn't understand like why i had no intention of it becoming a sequel <laughs> yeah it's a very definite story also that I don't know. I find that annoying that Mm -hmm. everything is just based on its franchise potential and we're not looking at just good single event (laughs) stories. Something else about the title. When you look for a movie to watch, do you look alphabetically on a streaming website? If I look through the categories that they have, because, you know, usually they're like feel good movies, thrillers. And if I look through there and I can't find anything then I usually go to, like, see all (laughs) alphabetically. But, yeah, it's at the bottom. They will, like, you have to change it to something between A and F. Well, no one said we're going to watch it. And I was like, what are you talking about? And it's probably fine to say this now. The guy telling me this was most famous for producing the Saw movies. So what the fuck? (laughs) That begins with S. (laughs) Well, it's been it's been promoted on Hulu now. Every time I go to Hulu, it's like, do you want to watch? We need to do something again. Yeah, I I enjoy seeing that as well. I will never delete Hulu now. It's a little like it's mood cool. boost. Like I'll be looking for something to watch, and I'll just see that, and I'll go, ah, I know you. I recognize this. That's very cool. Also, listeners, if you have not read or watched, we need to do something. You absolutely should. I know I've talked about it on other episodes, but just another reminder that you need to watch it or read it or both at the same time it's a short book and honestly you probably could if you're a fast reader you might be able to i don't know actually yeah how many pages is it 150 i think okay so movie is like 97 you... minutes i don't know that's too much math okay. yeah i'm like thinking i'm like what is the average reading <laughs> pace for a person <laughs> i don't know why i'm getting hung up on this please write into the show and if you will a mathematician uh, well, speaking of movies that include characters that are trapped, what else do we have that would fit into this? Yeah, I I love movies like this. Like mm-hmm. The Lighthouse is a movie I absolutely love. I don't. What do you think about The Lighthouse? I liked it. Mm-hmm. I need to watch it again because when I watched it, I was a little bit 
distracted I was like folding laundry and I'm like this is not a folding laundry movie this is like a I need to sit down with the lights off and like really yeah. <laughs> watch this and give it my full attention but Willem Dafoe was great in it he just went with it he he, <laughs> he thought you know I'm gonna play this guy who talks specifically like this and no one's gonna stop me I hope like he didn't <laughs> even discuss that with the director well, he just wouldn't feel he just wouldn't feel it but I doubt it because like, the guy who directed that, he always has crazy accents in his movies. Like he did The Witch, and he has that Viking yeah. movie coming out now. I yeah, I want to just believe that Willem Dafoe looked at the script and he's like, "Old lighthouse keeper, got it." No notes. I got. I'm here. <laughs> he just looks awesome in that. I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, one little movie that definitely springs to mind i'm a big fan of is green room which is about a, yes. a bunch of uh, punk rock musicians uh, stuck in a green room that's another really tense movie that movie's really intense i i saw that at the movies and they seen the silton bone is penetrated by a machete and the entitled audience just yelled. It's probably the best theater experience I've ever had. Just <laughs> all of us in unison, just groaning from this shield pain. Why do they call them green rooms? Do you know? I have no idea. Seems like a. So it's like where the band gets ready, right? Or like their little yeah waiting area. Could it have to do with getting high? Like, oh, go go to that room and green up, folks. Is that what they say? Is that what people say when you want to get high? Go green up? I think so. You know what? I was not cool enough to get off of drugs growing up to uh, be in on all the cool slides. Neither was I, which is really clear. I'm, I'm just going to uh, I'll ask it to my Tic Tac tweens if green up is appropriate. I think you just need to, like, say it. And just go with it. Like, yeah, that thing that we all say, green up. <laughs> Hashtag uh, green up, fellas. So we already talked about The Descent. I think Cube was another one. I started watching this last night, rewatching it. Yes. This is like group of people wake up in a cube. A cube. <laughs> but it's yeah, essentially a cube. But it's like rooms. They have to like go from like one cube room to like another cube room, but then there's like weird numbers, and there's like one girl that's a mathematician, and there's like something with prime numbers that I am not smart enough to understand what she is doing with those numbers and like prime numbers. And some of the rooms are just traps. Yeah. So when you watch a movie like that specifically with that concept, are you thinking, oh boy, I hope that never happens to me? Or are you thinking that would be so much fun? No, I'm thinking I hope that would never happen to okay. me because I'm just trying to think like what I could contribute to this group and it would be like nothing. I'm not smart enough to solve the math puzzles. I'm not brave enough to go first. <laughs> like, yeah, same. What am I doing? I'm just having a, a panic attack. <laughs> yep. That's my <laughs> mindset as well. I would die immediately. I would probably freak out and run and then some laser <laughs> would just like explode me like in the beginning of that terrible yeah. Resident Evil movie. I've not seen that. I thought you were talking about the first kill in the movie. Like the first scene in the movie is like a guy who's like going through and he goes through the next cube and it's like the lasers that just cut him into like oh, shit. Yeah. different pieces. And he's like, Boom. that's right. Yeah. The same scene happens in Resident Evil. What the hell? They stole they it? They did. Yeah. Rude. It's been a while since I've seen Cube, I guess. I have vague yeah. memories of just these people waking up and just trying kind of like it's basically saw right i mean kind of saw just kind of took that concept i don't remember because i didn't finish rewatching it i only watched rewatched a few minutes of it the other night while i was working and yeah i don't remember if we get to find out if there's a reason why all of them were picked it's like a random yeah thing so it's not they don't have the like they're being punished for something but it's like all of them can contribute something. Like they have the one, I remember the one mathematician girl, like the really smart math girl. Yeah. And then they have the guy who was the escape artist who like escaped out of jail several times. So like, say if you will, like plucked from society and dumped into one of these cubes and they design a specific thing to match your abilities. Like what do you think the, the escape room of you would be? <sighs> I... I think I know this one. It would be those, like, how many words can you make out of these random letters? I was always really good at those in school. Yeah. Like, when teachers were like, I need a break. Here's a puzzle. I'd be like, I can do 100 words. 
<laughs> Give me this. This is my. I love it. This is my sweet spot. Yeah. Like if I was on Survivor, I would not do well at any physical challenges. But give me something like this, mm-hmm. I would get that immunity doll. Yeah. Excellent. I like that. <laughs> it's a shame you have. What about you? <laughs> I don't know. Um, probably just like who can be the most clumsy? Like who could drop the many the most things? Like maybe there's like a the 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 ground has a special weight to it, and if you drop a certain amount of things throughout the room, it opens a, like a trap to only we can escape. I could do that. That'd be me too. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a graceful, graceful person. No, I I have lost track track of how many times I've uh, fallen or dropped something or just <laughs> split my skin open doing something stupid. We're talking about also House on Haunted Hill, which is like. A giant mansion so it doesn't quite have the same like trapped in a small space but it is characters who are trapped in a house and cannot get out i have never All seen are... this movie neat not the either one um you know what that's not true i have seen them but i do not remember anything that's about fair. them because there was two of them right yeah there's a black and white one then they remade it mm-hmm. okay yeah, I don't remember anything. Of, I don't even recall the concept. Is it like a spend a night in a haunted house and we'll pay you like a like a like a gift card for some restaurant or something? It's something like that. So in the, it's essentially these people are handpicked to attend this party at this haunted house, and they lock all the doors, and it's like the last one standing at daylight when the person comes to open the doors wins like a million dollars. So it's like a spooky clue. Almost. Kind of. Okay. I'd say the first one has those vibes more, the old black and white one. I like Clue. That's a good movie. That is a good movie. Yeah. I also had listed the um, Jill and Dramillo's uh, Dead trilogy, because every one of those movies, at least the initial three, involve people being trapped in a location. Like in Night of the Living Dead, we have that house. Dawn, we have the shopping mall. And day, we have that, like, underground base. And I didn't... I don't think I realized until recently that that was a thing throughout the trilogy. That we have these skeletons in one setting. And that will, like, dawn (laughs) dawn on me until then. I live, well, not super close, but I live close to, um... Near the cemetery for the first one, and then... I live close to the Monroeville Mall. The um, so that's like a big thing over here. The guy who um like built the bathroom for my movie, that like the one who physically was building it, him and his wife were huge uh, fans of his movies, and they got millied at that cemetery. He was showing me photos like on se- hmm. when we were on set of like just them dressed like the Kilatils in the movie, which is fun. Are they brother and sister in the movie? Is that right? Yeah. Which is okay. pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I just thought that was pretty cool. That's a cool place to get me all in. And is that shopping mall still operational? Did it close down? I can't. Yeah. No, it's operational. Cool. What is it like? Like, do they, have you been to it? Uh, not for a while. They used to have like a museum in Evan City that was kind of like, because they shot um, Night of the Living Dead and what is the other the crazies like the original the crazies was also shot um i think in evan city so they had like a a little museum with like costumes and stuff from the movie and i think that is now at the monroeville mall okay cool i have not seen the original crazies is it good i assume it is i have not either i've only seen the remake like when i went there i was like i didn't know there was a I don't know there was an original. <laughs> don't tell anyone that I had no idea this existed. <laughs> I I did say it, and they were like, you are not a real fan. Get out of here. <laughs> I like the remake, though. The remake's pretty good. I liked it, too. Yeah. It's one of the few... I mean, I don't know if, I can, if I'm even allowed to say this, since I haven't seen the original, but I don't know. I guess I can. The remake's good. It's good stuff. I think the Dawn of the Dead we remake is pretty good, too. I'm not a remake hater. Yeah. Some of them hit are better than others, but you know, I don't have like the knee jerk. Like all remakes are bad. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, <laughs> this remake, it went back in time and just like slit my throat as a child and erased the original from ever existing, and now my life is ruined. <laughs> I'm, I don't really, I don't think that though. 
I disagree with no. those people. Horror movie Twitter can get a little out of hand sometimes. Like, I'm like, everyone calm down. Another movie on the list, I think, was uh, Autopsy of Jane Doe. Mm-hmm. That movie's crazy. I love it. I That was one of the, like, when we will make and we need to do something, and when we will in pre-production, the director will want me to come up with a list of movies that are slightly similar so we could make, like, a pitch deck to send to possible uh, investment companies or something and that was definitely on the list that was like the og movie i had in mind i think just because you have people stuck in one room well, several rooms i guess but also vague supernatural stuff going on mm-hmm. that movie yeah it's pretty creepy i saw it when i was working a night shift at a hotel and the hotel was pretty empty and i can say it spooked me a little bit that'll do it i used to um do overnight baking at a bakery and it would be like either me and one person or me by myself and i would download movies to my phone to like watch if i got done early and yeah there's something about watching like horror movies when you're like (laughs) the only person in a a building that'll make it scary um ty west has a movie called the innkeep builds which i find i haven't liked as much since i originally watched it but when i watched it the first time it was at my hotel and no one was around at all. They had no check-ins all night. Just an empty lobby. And that movie was just like the perfect experience for me in that setting. But it's not as great as I as I initially remember it being, I don't think. I rewatched it a few weeks ago, too. And I agree. But I do like the atmosphere. And I do like like the ghost. But yeah, I think it, it lives more in like a three, three and a half star. This episode is brought to you by Libro FM. Libro FM is the first and only company which lets you purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore. You can pick from more than 150,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from booksellers. You'll get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company out there. You know the name. But you'll be part of a different story, one that supports community. If you're new to audiobooks, they're the perfect way to get more books into your busy life. Listen during your commute, while doing chores, walking the dog, or just relaxing at home. All you need is a smartphone and the free Libro FM app. If you already love audiobooks and don't know what to listen to next, check out recommendations and curated lists from people who know audiobooks best. Booksellers. I mean, and us. We also have a playlist on there full of books that have been recommended on this podcast. Books in the Freezer special offer, you get two audiobooks for the price of one, just $14.99, with your first month of membership using code FREEZERBOOK. This offer is valid for new members in Canada and the United States. Thank you, Libro FM, for supporting the show. All right, well, should we talk about some books? So the first one I picked for this one was The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. And this is like sci-fi, psychological horror, but this is about a woman named I actually don't know how the name is supposed to be pronounced. Gyre? Gyre? Uh, This is about a woman named Gyre who lies her way into a job. She lies about the experience that she has because this job pays enough so that she's hoping she can get enough money to leave the planet that she's on. And the job is a one-person operation. You wear a suit. You do some cave diving and some mapping and looking for minerals. So she thought her biggest issues would be... I don't know, being lonely, maybe like dealing with cave problems. But she goes there and she puts the suit on. That part I found really interesting, kind of like all the stuff leading up to the expedition and all the tests she has to go through and like the fitting for the suit and all of the things they did so that she really wouldn't have to do anything. And so she goes on this mission and she has this woman named M who's in her ear basically telling her what she needs to do and where she's at and giving her information. But the problem is that Um, just kind of starts dosing her with things like putting her to sleep, really taking control of her suit and what she's doing. So they they already have this antagonistic relationship. And then she's telling Jire that she's the first person in this cave, but then Jire's finding things that is making her think that that's possibly not the case. So they don't trust each other. And yeah, just as she goes, there's like little inconsistencies. She's getting very lost and disoriented. And this book was so claustrophobic because as you and I talked about, caves are a no thank you. And being like the only person in a cave with just like someone in your ear telling you what to do as like the only direction. I 
I would die. No. No, thank you. And then that she might not be alone down there. No. Yeah. I haven't read this, but it sounds pretty terrifying. I've only read one book by Caitlin, and um, I think it was called Yellow Jasmine. Jasmine? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I'm not positive how to pronounce that real, but it was about poison and out in the open, so not really similar to this one. But I did have many copies of this book at one time when I used to, uh, when publishing companies used to mail like physical AL seeds of books. They haven't since COVID, at least not with me. But they sent me the book like five fucking times. I kept thinking, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but they really wanted you to read I it. I didn't. Like, we need... <laughs> I regret it. I should have. Something about the Kevil, because usually I would get sent books that will not in any genre I was interested in, like um, like, like mm -hmm. held science fiction and stuff. And the Kevil kind of made me think that's what it was. So I didn't really investigate filth into yeah. it. So I regret not reading it when I had a copy. I no longer will do. But I need to get one now. Yeah, it has like the suit hand. I thought it was like an astronaut. <laughs> I did not. There look might into be it. different covers. Yeah, maybe it was like an astronaut, like I guess in a cave, maybe. Well, maybe I just think anything with a helmet is an astronaut. That's fairly possible. I just have okay. like if I see like a guy riding a motorcycle, I'm like, oh, look at an astronaut go. <laughs> so rating system, I would put this in the fridge. It was yeah, parts of it, like I said, were really unsettling. I. The idea of being stuck in a cave, especially, I guess, in this, like, space cave, no thank you, would be <laughs> absolutely terrifying. And then you do have the whole, who is M? What is she telling me? And can I trust her? Because she's lied to me before, but she's also, like, my only chance for survival. Like, I don't know where I am. I don't know what I'm doing. Type of deal. So this is a fridge book. And that was The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. I do think it's really funny I am on this podcast right now because I think I mentioned I do not have a fridge nor a freezer at the moment. So it feels like just like a punch in the face. <laughs> Every time I say it, I'm like, don't you wish you had a cold book right now? I do wish this. <laughs> Yesterday we bought one of those like ice making devices you plug in on a candle just because we will dine from not having ice model. It's just hell. I don't recommend it to anyone. I don't know how anyone lived. You're getting one. Are you getting one soon? I don't know. <laughs> we don't have the money to buy a new one. It's like fucking 3000 bucks. But the uh, the compressor we have is under uh, warranty. So we were just waiting for um, the company to get a replacement in and then contact us so we can let the, the local repeal guy we are going to have do the job come pick it up. But... It's been several weeks now, and they'll not get back to us. Wow. Yeah. So if I say something's in the fridge, it's pretty lukewarm, because there's, no, <laughs> there's, there's <laughs> nothing to it. <laughs> um, one of the books I had brought up on the list was, well, several Stephen King books, because I don't know if we were talking about that on the podcast, or before we began recording but Stephen King loves writing about this topic. He loves writing kill to old stuck in a location. So I think the one I have listed is um, Misery by uh, well, by Stephen King, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and this is one, I think, which is probably true with most people who grew up like in the, I guess, 90s and 2000s. And then it's scheduled King. They discovered him like through a movie, and then they went, "Oh, you know, there's also books." And this was mine, I think, because as a kid, I often did not go to school because I, my mom was just like, "Yeah, if you want to stay home, that's fine." And my choices of things to watch on TV will like judge shows, shows, or like the shows will it's like. You will not the dad. And the guy would like jump around going, yeah, yeah, fuck kids. I hate them. And <laughs> so we would just watch movies. And that was a movie I would watch all the time. And it seems really romantic to me, I guess. And it kind of inspired me to uh, embrace writing. I, looking back now, I think just because I like the idea of someone just like shoving me in a room and saying, 
just just write a book. You don't have to do anything else. You can just write a book. And I was I thought that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> That's been my aspirations ever since. I eventually read the book. It's pretty similar to the movie, minus a few things. Uh, how much do we want to do? We spoil on this show nothing. I mean, I it depends on book to book. I mean, I think that's been in the cultural site. Okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think so. Too. Annie Wilkes, you know, maternal loving character. She just wants to take care of you and wants you to write your book. Yeah, this one, this this one's been out long enough. The only difference I can recall is in the movie she breaks his ankles with like a sledgehammer i believe in the book she just cuts his fucking feet off oh i haven't read the book oh my my bad <laughs> it's okay no yeah i mean i figured something like that had to happen but yikes okay yeah but i think the movie choice was actually a good choice changing it because i think just like from a visual standpoint it's really uh, a little painful to see someone's legs just snap then to be cut off uh, it's that sound right that sound of that st- crunch well it's when she's like setting it up mm-hmm. too and you're like oh my god oh my oh my god <laughs> yeah i uh, didn't uh kathy bates like win some type of a world for that movie i want to say so i think she did that's such a good movie um so the rating system is it is it room temp fridge and then freezel is that right Mm -hmm. okay i think i would give this book a room temp i love it but i think it's a pretty cozy most of the time it's just like a dude (laughs) and like a fan just hanging out mostly and sometimes it gets intense but like mostly they kind of just relax and you know they read books and talk about books yeah i'm gonna go to room temp so you would be okay with like a rabid fan kidnapping you yeah if they were like i just need you to focus and write your next book all i want is mill time to write <laughs> i have so many things going on it sounds like a dream yeah and like if i but what if what if they're making you write? we need to do something too and it's something you don't want to do and they're like this is the only way uh it but depends how like uh and in, like intrusive they get with the feedback because, like, if I was writing, we need to do something, too. It would probably be, like, I would write myself into it, being fools to write it. I would get kind of Charlie Kaufman with it. And, like, I say that now, and that sounds like a good idea. So I don't know what to think about that now. Like, maybe I should write a second movie. It's funny. Um, I don't think I've talked about this at all. But at one point, they um, they kept asking me about, like, franchise stuff. And I did outline mm-hmm. a, a sequel slash prequel which would take place like in an insane asylum and hmm. it would have a- the Amy kill tool. If it's like a side kill tool and we need to do something, it would be Amy inside this insane asylum and it would be set up as like taking place before she met like Melissa and the family. But then I would have, I wanted the original cast from the Evil movie playing different people in the insane asylum and it would be okay. suggested, like, well, maybe this is a sequel. Maybe this is a prequel. No one uh, responded to that email. <laughs> Ryan Murphy's allowed to do it. Why can't you? Exactly. He even had uh, Sahila McFilmick in one of his new shows, right? Yeah. The, oh, really? Yeah. I, honestly, I think if I think I have a, a case to sue Ryan Murphy. A month before my movie was a, uh, was out, right? It had already done, gone to Tribeca, and so people have seen it. Like a month before my movie came out, he did that uh, that anthology show, American Hills series, and Sahila McFilmick is in it, and she plays a moody uh, lesbian teenager who like has lines almost directly from the movie. It's fairly uncanny, and I'm going to sue Ryan Milfi. This podcast is me <laughs> announcing that. That's so funny. This will be the second episode in a row that someone wages war against Ryan Murphy <laughs> well, for stealing ideas. What was the context of the last one? <laughs> it was Lauren, and she said she would do themed um, like decorations for Halloween. Like She would go all out, and she's like, every year, she's like, without fail, the American Horror Story theme would be revealed, and it would be what I was planning to do <laughs> that year. She's <laughs> like, every single time. Like, Asylum gone she's like i was gonna do an 80 slasher 
1984. <laughs> okay. I hope he listens I to win. this podcast in every episode. He's like, God damn it. Why do you guys keep shit talking? <laughs> I just want to enjoy this. Get some original ideas, Ryan. So my next pick is Final Girls by Mira Grant. I could have done Into the Drowning Deep, but I feel like I talk about that a lot. Uh, so Final Girls essentially is like, what if you could fix the worst parts of yourself by confronting your worst fears and this is about a woman named dr jennifer webb who has invented this like virtual reality technology and essentially you go in this tube and you get put in this virtual reality that are like horror movie or nightmare scenarios but they're supposed to help you like work through your trauma so like when we're introduced to this it's like two sisters who are estranged and they are like running away from like a boogeyman in the forest together. And when they come out of it, they're like, wow, like I love you. We worked through all of our issues after this experience. But there's a woman named Esther Hoffman who is a journalist and her whole journalistic ideal is debunking pseudoscience. So she is doubting these claims that all you need to do is go into this like virtual reality pod and you're going to really confront all your trauma and you're going to come out a different person. So she decides that she's going to go into it herself. And Dr. Jennifer Webb goes goes under as well and is in the simulation with her. The problem is, is that like they're in these glass tubes, like in this virtual reality. So they're in danger in this simulation. And then another company that wants to steal the technology has taken over the lab while they are under in these tubes, like totally helpless. That sounds really good. I have never heard of this book before, but it's, I gotta get it. That sounds great. What a good concept. I love that a different company has taken over doing it. That sounds hilarious. I don't know. That would be like my fear is like, well, I'm going to be just like totally helpless in this like glass tube like totally out like what what if something happens on the outside <laughs> like i can't would you I can't do anything would you specifically be thinking like what if a competing company takes over the, the lab while i'm inside this it's at the forefront of my mind <laughs> all the time <laughs> i'm surprised that technology isn't maybe it already is i don't know like i'm surprised like we don't have the option to go do one of those right now by now Maybe it's getting there, though. What virtual reality horror would you pick if you had to? Like, what? Like, is it something specifically like, oh, I need to, like, relive something traumatic in my life to, like, get over it? Is that, like, what the scenario no, is? No, they're, like, you're kind They're, like, mixed. Like, she's, like, waking up in her childhood bedroom, but they're zombies. I see. So she's, like, gotta... <laughs> gotta fight these zombies. I don't think I would do zombies. I think that would be a common choice, though. Because I think a lot of zombie movies will, like... Sometimes they feel like, man, wouldn't it be great if we could just shoot a bunch of people in the fucking head and not get arrested? And <laughs> I don't think that's, I don't think that sounds nice at all. Um, what I would choose, I don't know, probably like, I would want to go through like a, like a fucking Wolfman transformation. That would be cool. Like just milf out and run around eating trash. That sounds cool. Like if I did that now, I would, I would be arrested. So I would need to do it just in a tube. You're just virtual. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if I would get like a Chucky one because I hate dolls mm -hmm. so much. And I know everyone's thing with Chucky is like, he's two feet tall. Like, just kick him. It's like, no, if you watch the movies, he has like grown man strength. Mm -hmm. I Have you seen the show? Yeah. It's pretty shocking how good that show is. It was really fun. Yeah. I it just I don't know. I guess my gut instinct is if you tell me, oh yeah, sci-fi has a Chucky TV show, is to laugh and say why, but it's good. I like it. It's, I haven't finished it yet, but it's good. I haven't either. <laughs> We're both like it's so great. It's so the great. best show I've ever seen. I have not finished it. <laughs> it's taken me, in fact, several several weeks to get a few episodes in, but I love it. Um, I would say this is fairly room temperature. It's not like edge of your seat tense and i would say it's a little more heartwarming like to see her like her, what her problems are and her like kind of dealing with them through this like horror scenario there's also yeah like the other plot of like they're in physical danger <laughs> right now but i really thought the virtual reality stuff and the scenarios and stuff were very interesting i think that was my favorite part of it i wonder if that uh technology has like a like a shuffle 
option, like a ra like a random one. I think I would go with random, so I could be surprised by what I get. I might regret that immediately. I immediately <laughs> get zombies and just be mad. <laughs> Damn it, zombies! Okay, All right, so that is Final Girls by Mira Grant, and it's a novella, so it's fairly short. I like novellas. Novellas are great. My next yeah. one is The Ruins by Scott Smith, which is written by a guy who has written, what, two books now? It's insane. He has that and a simple plan, and mm -hmm. I think that's it. I think he has a novella about a dog, perhaps, and some Chris Golden anthology, but I haven't tracked that down yet. But beyond that, I don't think he's done anything else, and I'm really mad about this. He wrote a short story in that Hark the Herald Angels Scream Christmas anthology. Hmm. Is that good? Because I remember, I thought so. It was called like Christmas in Barcelona. Okay. I'll have to look into that as well. I don't know. Like, I think a simple, I think a simple plan came out in the nineties, if I, if I recall. Mm -hmm. And then I saw the movie. I haven't read it. I don't know. I would love to tell you the end of the book, but that's probably going a bit too far mm -hmm. up to you because it's insane. Well, I watched it. I was very young. My parents okay. took me to go see it in theaters. And I remember someone like gets fully just like blown open. Yeah. <laughs> I was like that is all I remember from that movie. Is okay. like people find money. Yeah. And then there's a scene where someone just like fully like through the gut gaping hole blown open. <laughs> that happens sometimes. <laughs> I would I, I won't say what happens, but I'll just I'll, I would highly recommend revisiting the movie it's a good movie but also reading the book because the book is great but also the last like 20 pages will just feel really odd and they don't <laughs> if you had seen the movie filth then you go to read the book you would be like what the fuck is going on this didn't happen in the movie at all and it makes sense why they changed it so huh. i would love to talk to no, you I'm about curious. that but i think oh. it's better if you experience it without any uh, knowledge okay. prior uh but scott Ruins, Scott Ruins, that's a great name. <laughs> that's a fucking <laughs> badass name. Uh, Scott Smith wrote also The Ruins, which is a completely different genre. And I haven't read it since, probably since 2006 or 2007. I don't know when it came out. Do you happen to know offhand? I don't. The movie came out in 08, though, so. Okay, so. That if, sounds about right. Yeah. I, um, I distinctly remember reading this. I My teenage yields were kind of odd. And it will explain why I love, like, trapped movies and books so much. I was living in a hotel with my parents from, like, age 12 to 16. Like, we didn't go to school. We'll leave the hotel for several years. And, oh, wow. But, like, we would go to the library sometimes. And I recall, I mean, this was before I even knew about, like, books beyond, like, the main, like, Stephen King and so on. And I just saw the ruins, like, in the library book cell, and I thought, this cover looks cool. And I, I got it, and I took it back to the hotel, and I was just in love with it. It was, I haven't reread it since, I don't want to, but I have distinct memories of just unable to put it down at all. It was so intense. It had some crazy shit going on with, like, vines, like, suffocating people. Am I making that up? No. Okay. Good. Good. <laughs> it's a it's a true memory. Okay. Yeah. It's like they go hiking up some pyramid, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what? No, it's not called a pyramid, is it? I don't know. It's like an ancient ruin of some type. Oh, yeah. well, that would make sense. The book is called The Ruins. This memory of how intense it is and how like nobody in this book is safe at all, and just like Scott Smith like is just going through this without any any like hesitation of like oh you kill about this person too bad now they're dead they've been suffocated by a vine it just really like shook me because i don't know i guess i wasn't used to reading something like that from people who were not stephen king at the time and i know i saw the movie i recall not being too impressed with the movie but maybe i just need to revisit it it's been a long time because i think i saw the movie probably when it came out but I would, I mean, what is your experience with the book, the old movie? I read the book, I want to say maybe 2015, 2016, around there. Um, and I really liked it. It, like, blew me away, I think. I love survival horror and one of my favorite tropes, which 
is present in a lot of these scenarios, but is like people in an awful situation and they start turning on each other because they're realizing the severity of their situation. Yeah. <laughs> Can't deal with each other anymore. So there was that aspect of it. There was the survival horror. And then there was just the psychological horror. And like in the book, I think a bit more than the movie, the vines really fuck with them on a lot of love like psychologically just like really mess with i liked the movie i don't it's not like my favorite adaptation ever but there was like decent there's some big changes made and i think a lot of character like personalities get switched around but i think scott smith wrote the screenplay so it's like fairly accurate i google his name constantly just trying to like see if those updates I mean, I don't, I don't think writers have to like be prolific or anything. So like, I don't, I'm not mad at him specifically, but damn it, there's a selfish pill in me who's like, please publish something else. Yeah, I'm like that with Gillian Flynn. I was just, too. I'm like three, three is all we three in the novella. I was just about That's to bring her up as well. She's someone else who I always Google. Like, come on, don't just write fucking tv shows for amazon write a new book because wasn't she writing some show called like utopia i think so the last update i remember hearing from her was like yeah she wrote that movie or she worked on that movie widows mm -hmm. well she did write the tv uh mini series phil Sh shelf objects which was on hbo and i thought was pretty mm, fucking yeah. good yeah that was a good adaptation i would just give it um despite the fact that i don't have one at the moment i would rate it a freeze all yeah I would, this, this book freezes yeah. despite taking place in i think mexico yeah this book creeped me out <laughs> for sure i'm definitely never gonna go explore like some ancient ruin now like if someone said hey you want to come walk up this ruin with me i'm gonna say no we went to mexico a few years ago to visit a family friend and he took us to some it was a more commercial like touristy area but it was like some ruins but i did like an instagram story i'm like four americans go into some ruins <laughs> what could go wrong <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when you, you bring that up because sometimes like you do well i do i'll see something well so obvious like well this was a hula movie they would die as soon as they went into it or as soon as they did the certain thing. And that, I, I can't focus until I do exactly that just because I think it would be funny if I did. Just like, oh, well, yep, I did the one thing you're not supposed to do. Isn't that a fun joke? But sometimes, like, it's just a joke for me. I don't need to tell anyone about it. I'm just like, yeah, this is funny. <laughs> um, what, a, what a crack up if I died right now doing this. So that's who you would be in a horror movie? Probably. And I would die laughing, probably. Like, <laughs> the thing happened. It happened. <laughs> I'm dying now. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at this laundry sheet. I'm going to stick my hand in. <laughs> Wouldn't it be crazy if something just chopped my hand off right now? <laughs> Oh my god, that was really crazy. <laughs> it actually happened. <laughs> Quick, take a pick. My last pick is Near the Bone by Christina Henry. And this is about a woman named Maddie who lives in an isolated cabin with her husband, William. And I will say, trigger warnings for domestic abuse. That is a very big part of this book. But yeah, William keeps her up there she's not allowed to leave this they live on a mountain and they live in this small cabin and she is not allowed to leave she has a lot of very specific rules that william has for her like what she's allowed to do she's not allowed to interact with anybody outside like he leaves to go into town every once in a while to get supplies but she cannot leave but she hears something outside in the woods that wasn't there something with sharp teeth and claws and so she goes out to see what it is and she finds something, but she also finds people. And these are cryptozoologists who are looking for <laughs> a creature. I will not get into what it is, but a, a creature that lives on this mountaintop. And it is like all of these worlds coming together. There's just a lot of things going on in here. But I, I don't know. I had a lot of fun with it. I mean, as much fun as you can have in a story about someone escaping an abusive toxic domestic abuse relationship but and you know with cryptids though so i think that balances it out a little bit i almost lost my mind i thought you were gonna say crypto bros and that's why i thought you were going with it and i did not expect you to say that <laughs> so that's all i'm thinking about right now <laughs>
sorry. <laughs> Can you imagine like a woman who's lived in the mountains and has like no, has not like been in society for years, like someone explaining <laughs> cryptocurrency to her? <laughs> we reinvented currency. <laughs> just chills around and goes back into the house I'm like nah, i'm okay <laughs> that sounds like a good book though i have not read it I, don't, I haven't read any of the ones you've mentioned and they all sound really exciting what a good concept of a podcast this is thank you yeah, yeah I, I was looking through and i'm like i think this one would be like a better fit but i try not to like do so many repeat ones so um i don't know i really like christina henry and she was a surprise author for me because like the first book i read by her was lost boy and that's like a peter pan retelling from like the perspective of captain hook and i'm like that does not sound like something i would like i'm not that kind of reader Mm -hmm. and i loved it oh (laughs) it was like one of my favorite books that year and i'm like i don't know but yeah everything she's written i've pretty much really liked cool i'm gonna have to i'm surprised the Peter Pan one ended up being good because, like you, when you just told me that concept, I'm like, I'm okay, like, no, I'm good, I can, I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. What would you rate this one? Uh, I would say light fridge, maybe like chilly room temperature. I think the most terrifying parts are the parts with William. Like, I think his presence is the most terrifying. You know, like he's the real yeah so yeah i would say the way that he is controlling and keeps her in isolation and like physically abuses her were the most terrifying parts the the creature itself and like the hunting of it and like stuff like is not as scary i'm hesitant to say this because if i the phrasing of it but i'm not sure how else to say it but i'm a big fan of domestic abuse in fiction i <laughs> <laughs> I just seem to be drawn to it. It seems to really grab my attention when it happens. Like, I find that pretty intense, usually. I mean, yeah, it is a, an intense... Like, did you like uh, The Invisible Man? Yeah, some of it. I did, too. Yeah. Some of it. A lot of it. Some of a it. A lot of it. Sometimes high-tech science fiction, like technology stuff, kind of just like, makes me go, eh. But beyond that, beyond... Like, all the explanation and, like, the technology. I think I like that. I like the rest of it. There was a scene in that movie that, similar to what I was saying in Green Room, made the entire audience just go, like, oh, shit, which involved the, uh, the sister. Oh, my God. That, like, I was alone in my house watching it, but I was, like, <gasps> oh, my God. What's funny is, at the time... My my wife had like dropped like a something like a popcorn or something, and she bent to pick it up real fast, and she missed it. She was like, "What happened?" It's <laughs> <was> like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You'll see. You'll see in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> because it happens so quickly too. That scene. Yeah. yeah. People yeah, say so. blinking, you miss it, but the expression should be: uh, you drop something in a movie theater and bend over to retrieve it, and you miss it. Again, the the old idiom they say. You drop a piece of popcorn, you miss it. Yeah, that's what happens. All right, so that was Near the Bone by Christina Henry. Great. My last one is a Paul Tremblay book. His No, it's not his last novel. It's his second to last one he put out called The Cabin at the End of the Universe. The World. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> this is when I, if this is when I'm more comfortable recording my own podcast because I can just go, well, no one will have to know I said that. And I just edit that out. <laughs> um, really long title. That's difficult for me to remember. Great book, I think. Really intense book about uh, these uh, these two guys and the little adopted daughter. I think just, I don't think they live in this cabin. I think they'll just like going on vacation, right? Like a getaway. Basically a home invasion type of thing from this like apocalypse cult who's like well mm-hmm. you, the whole oh not the universe the whole world's about to die unless they do something specific if i recall but we don't need to get into that and it's really intense home invasion stuff can freak me out i think because it gets yeah. to my head like i i'm not the biggest fan of true crime stuff mostly because of that like a lot of true crime i think involves home invasions and I will begin getting really paranoid and looking out the window a lot and 
not being able to sleep. And this book kind of scratches that itch. Although it's not really an itch, it's more like a scab that doesn't want to be scratched, but then it does anyway, and then I begin bleeding. And there's a, a lot of the things we're talking about today have like an oh shit moment, and that book definitely has one. Have you read the book? Yeah. Yeah. Yikes. Uh, yeah. I remember yeah, but reading that scene, but also there's so much in this book that just stressed me out. Like I needed to take physical breaks from it because I was stressed out Mm -hmm. and i don't know the idea of this like cult too that you can't reason with because like they have this religious fervor and they're like no the world's gonna end Mm -hmm. like oh my god it's just terrifying on so many levels i find yeah i find a lot of uh religious stuff and fatal fiction pretty spooky um maybe that's why i like stephen king so much because i think he does like the um the mean religious person fairly well like in the mist that one specifically also a trapped yeah. story thinking about it now but yeah was that woman who like begins like recruiting people a little too full side thinking we have to fuck i don't know it's been a while i think they want to kill the kid maybe i don't know i will i would give this one also freezel it's super intense i mean it's a great book it's not my favorite paul tremblay book i think my favorite is a uh, disappearance at devil's rock but this one is way more intense than that one i think i think i'm the same way i need to reread disappearance at devil's rock i remember it being a gut punch though mm-hmm. when i read it um i think head full of ghosts is still my favorite i think i just like all the layers that book is great i love the ending of that one mm-hmm I read that on a flight in one sitting, and it was like, oh my god, what a what an experience! I'm excited for this new one coming out. Have you read it Me yet? Too. I don't know. I think no, uh, I, I think review copies have been going out. I don't have one though. I know I have not gotten one either. <laughs> I do I do find oh. it really funny that he had the courage to name a book that title, given what his name is. It just seems like he's setting himself up for so many puns. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Maybe that's what he wants his fan base. Maybe. To be. We're the Paul Bearers Club. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> How could he live with himself? <laughs> Have you read his crime novels? No, I haven't. Have you? Yeah, they all okay. You can you definitely see like a big step in improvement from those to a head full of ghosts but they'll still kind of fun the the concept of like the premise is it's like detective who has narcolepsy which is really funny <laughs> and the book's all pretty so, funny all right well those have been our picks for trapped horror i keep thinking of the theme song to orange is the new black how's it go I'm a bad singer, so I'm cutting this out. <laughs> this is not going in there. It's like the animals, the animals, trap, 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 till the cage is full, the cage is full. Excellent. Please do not cut that. <laughs> I have never seen that show. <laughs> that show had a hold on me when it came yeah. out, and then they killed one of my favorite characters um, in like season four, and I was like, I can't do it anymore. Get out of here. I'm too mad. I'm done. <laughs> that that checks out. Shows like to do that for no reason, and then you know, you gotta say goodbye to them. I took it like super personally, like they did this just to upset me. All right. Well, a tradition that we have in Books in the Fraser is to ask our guests for a chilling obsession or something they're enjoying in horror fiction, or sorry, something they're enjoying in horror. I guess the biggest thing right now with me is uh. I just finished the finale. Is a uh, Severance on Apple TV. Have you? I don't have Apple TV. Everyone is talking about it, and I have so much FOMO. I uh, I don't pay for Apple TV. I bought an iPad, and they just gave it to me. What? Yeah. I bought an iPad. Do I have Apple TV? You might. I just had access to it. I don't know. Like it didn't. Well, I got to do it. I'm looking at my iPad. Like okay. <laughs> you might have it. <laughs> <laughs> um. I love it. It's super good. I love um, books and movies that take place like in offices and anything like mm-hmm. like workplace and 
it really capsuled the, uh, the the concept of a shitty job feeling like one long day that never ends. Like when I was at the hotel, it always just felt like it was just one long night, and I was always at the place. And it capsules that feeling so damn well on this show. Everyone online has been saying it's very good. So I will have to check that out. And I'm going to check if I have Apple TV. You might. <laughs> All this time, you could have been watching it. Bye. I would, uh, If you do have it, I would also recommend... I haven't watched season two yet, but season one was good. Um, it's called Sylvent. Pretty good. Okay. I think it's a M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. yeah. I think he produced it and maybe directed a few episodes, but... Really, extremely trippy. It's about a couple who hire a babysitter to move in with them and live in with them to watch the little newborn baby. But the, <laughs> the baby is one of those damn, like, when you lose a baby and they give you, like, like an anxiety doll type of thing. And that's just what they have mm. in the house. And they just act like it's oh. real. I'm not spoiling anything. That's established immediately in the pilot. It's really trippy and odd. I don't know where I thought that was going, but it wasn't there. <laughs> what about you? They're saying, like, you know when a couple loses a baby? And I was like, yeah, the next one's called, like, a rainbow oh, baby. And no. they're like, no, it's a doll. Yeah, it's just made of plastic. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, lately, what have I been doing? I have been kind of stressed, so I have not been watching too much horror. I did rewatch the original Candyman. That was, like... It's so good. Yeah. Have you seen the new one? I have not. Have you? Okay. Yes. Well, there's a, a character in the new one that was from the old one. Um, but when the character is like introduced, I was like, oh, like it was news to me. Like <laughs> it was. A... <laughs> the original is pretty much a perfect movie. I think that one's just yeah. insanely good. How was the new one? I haven't, seen, as I said, I haven't seen it. I really liked it. I think with, I think, did you watch the new Scream? Yeah. Okay. Because it kind of is the, like, requel type of thing. And I think it balanced, like, honoring the old one and having nods to it without going overboard on that end. But also kind of being a new thing. Yeah. And going a different way with it. Um, which I thought was really interesting. I don't know. There were some really good kills. I liked the art aspect to it. it was good. I like bees in movies. I think mill bees should be used in movies. Did you watch Jackass Forever? I did. <laughs> I, did. I love it. <laughs> Best movie of the year. Candyman sequel. <laughs> imagine, imagine like Candyman watching that movie and being like, oh, that's a bit much, guys. <laughs> Even I'd be like, I wouldn't even do that. Thank you. <laughs> even I would not do that. All right. Well, our second uh, tradition that we have on this show is to ask our guests what their final girl song would be. So we have a playlist with everyone's answers. So Max, what would your final girl song be? Would this be like the song that plays after I, I have survived the movie and I'm being like towed away in a track? Or is this like as I fight the final boss? It is up to interpretation. So I've had people do like, this is the end credit song. Like, you know, like, it's me, bloody, bam, end credits song. I've had the like, this is me fighting the bad guys, or this is me catatonic waiting for help to arrive. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I got you. I'm looking, I'm looking at some music on my, that I've purchased or downloaded in the past. I have a lot of Modest Mouse songs on my computer. Let's go. Let's go with the Modest Mouse song. Which one is it going to be? Okay, I'll go with Wild Pack of Family Dogs by Modest Mouse. I'm not familiar with that one. It's about a, a family living in the country, and these uh, wild dogs keep like getting into the trash and raising havoc. Eventually, the dogs uh, kill the kid's uh, sister, and it ends, the song ends with the boy going out and like joining the dogs and running away hmm. it's a pack so i imagine that would happen to me as well <laughs> so let's go with that <laughs> i love that okay all right i will be adding that to the playlist okay. so people can check that out on there excellent so thank you so much for coming on and talking with me today about trapped Horror. we still don't have a good title <laughs> after all this <laughs> i think trap's okay i don't know 
So it'd be like trapped exclamation point. Yeah. yeah. It makes me think of like like those shows, I forget what channel, but like Snapped is one of the shows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be a good show. Trapped. Yeah. Horror. <laughs> um so everyone go get Maggot Screaming. By the time this episode comes out, it will be available for you to go purchase. So go do that. Heartwarming tale of corpses and family love. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so where can people find you online? Um, you can go to, I tweet at, at give me your teeth. And my website is tales from the booth. All right. Well, thank you again. Thank you. Coming on. Yeah. Books in the Freezer is a bi-weekly podcast. We post episodes every other Tuesday. You can find us on Twitter at Books Freezer Pod, on Instagram at Books in the Freezer, at Facebook at Facebook.com slash Books in the Freezer, and on TikTok at Books in the Freezer. And of course, you can send us an email at Books in the Freezer at gmail.com. If you would like to support the podcast, there are a few ways to do that. And one of them is to become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash books in the freezer. So you can go check it out. There's some cool stuff there, you know, early episode release, uh, getting to know what the topic is ahead of time, um, participating in discussions. Like if I'm having an author on, I'll open it to questions for that author or guest, movie nights, bonus episodes. So check that out if that sounds interesting to you. Another way to support the podcast is to use the Amazon link that will be in the show notes that takes you right to Amazon and you just do your normal shopping that you would normally do. And a small percentage of that goes to help the podcast. And if you would like to help the podcast in a way that does not include spending money, you can absolutely do that. One of those ways is to leave a review on a site like Apple Podcasts, um, just a few sentences and a star rating, or on Spotify where I think it's only a star rating. It's a very quick process if you're a Spotify user. And honestly, just sharing about the podcast on social media helps, and I am very grateful. Uh, Every time I get tagged in a story talking about the podcast, it really makes my day. So thank you to all of you who have done that and have taken the time to leave reviews and everything. I really appreciate all your support. I'm Stephanie. You can find me on Twitter at lady underscore Ganya. That's L-A-D-Y underscore G-A-G-N-O-N. And on Instagram at that's what she read. And that is that's with two A's. So thank you for listening and... See you next time on Books in the Freezer.